Welcome back to my course of Digital Design in Verilog. In today's class, we are going to talk about canonical forms for switching function. This part of this uh, lecture was uh, taken from chapter 3 of Kohavi's book. So, in last class, we talked about switching algebra, switching expression and switching function. And as I mentioned, a combinational circuit, I can represent as an expression, right, switching expression. Um, and then also I have talked about the equivalence of two expression uh, or say two uh, combination circuit. Uh, the conventional way is like you can take, uh, uh, you can convert them into some switching expression and you try to simplify them. And if they turns out to be uh, the same expression, then you can always uh, say they are equivalent, right. But there is no guarantee that you can always, uh, it is ab about how do you simplify it, right. So, if there is an unique representation for uh, for both of them, right. So, if I apply uh, certain uh, rules and I can end up having the same expression which is unique, right. So, then I can easily say that these two functions are equivalent or two circuits are equivalent. And this unique representation is called canonical form, right. It means that no matter what is the function, if you convert into its canonical form, and if uh, if there are two functions are equivalent, whatever their their representation is, if you convert them into canonical form, they will always end up in the same expression. This is guaranteed, right? Because this canonical forms is the unique representation. For switching function uh, or switching algebra, uh, the, this there are two uh, very well known canonical forms. One is called sum of product and product of sum. So, this is SOP and this is POS. This is also say conjunctive normal form CNF and this is disjunctive normal form which is DNF. Okay. So, in today's class we will talk about uh, these two uh, some of uh, these canonical forms, how can I convert an, any expression to these forms and other aspects uh, on this canonical form. Okay. So, for uh, sum of product uh, the term is called mean term or product term. Product term means is basically product of this switching variables that means say you can have x, y, uh, z. So, if so it depends on this mean terms is basically consists of all the variables either in uh, normal form or their complement form. So, if in a circuit you have uh, x, y, z three variables, the possible product terms are like x, y, z, x bar, y bar, z bar, then x, y bar, z bar, then x, y bar, z. So, there are eight possible such values, right. It is basically all possible combinations, right. So, if I write them, it is uh, x bar, y, z, then x bar, y, z bar, then x bar y bar and this is already there. So, this way you can write. So, 6 is done. So, other 2 is like x y bar x uh, y z bar uh, sorry is x y z bar and then x uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, which is missing here. So, uh, and then this is x, y bar, z, right. So, this way you can identify all possible cases, okay. So, these are the possible mean terms. So, now uh, I will say sum of product form is like it will basically or of any of this product term, right. So, for example, say x, y, z plus x bar y bar z and so on, right. So, uh, this way uh, I can write a function, okay. So, this is sum of product, why? This is the product term and this is sum. So, that is, it is this is why it is called sum of product. So, this is one of the canonical representation where I will whatever the function I have, I will convert them into mean term and I will first will convert each, each variables or each sub expression into mean terms 
and I'll represent this function as a sum of product terms. Okay. Similarly, you can have product of sum, which is just the opposite. Here you have a term called max term, right? So max term is the uh, the sum term, right? So it is basically uh, sum term is like x plus y plus z. If you have three variables, uh, let me write all of them. Then cell x bar, y bar plus z bar, then x bar plus y bar plus z, then you have x bar plus y plus z bar, then you have x uh, plus y plus z, these are the four possible, then you have x plus y bar plus z bar, then you have x plus y bar plus z, then you have x plus y plus z bar and then x plus y plus z. So, these are the possible 8 max terms and then I want to express my function in terms of product of all these max terms, right. So, this is I can take a function which is basically say x plus y plus z bar dot x plus y plus z dot say x bar plus y bar plus z bar. Okay. In the max term all the variable will occur either in the normal form or in the complement form and a function which is basically product of this subset of the mean terms. Okay. So, I can convert this any function into this form and this is, is a product of sum terms. Right? This, is, this is why it is called product of sum. So, we can uh, so this both of them are canonical forms sum of product and product of sum. Uh, why this is canonical intuitively is basically you can think about if there are three variables right. So, there are uh, 8 possible values right. So, and I have uh, I have taken all possible and each of them is basically uh, re reflecting to either a product term or a sum term. And now uh, a function is basically uh, sum of this product term will be 1 and for sum of the product term it will be 0 that is what I have discussed in the last class that a function will map an expression into 0 or 1, right. So, now uh, you can think about that if these two functions f and g are equivalent, then for the same mean term they will have this 1, right. Then only they will be s equal, right. And since I am uh, representing this function now in terms of mean term and then all the mean term for which this variable is 1 that will occur there, right. So, that is why uh, this is kind of a canonical form. Now, I will explain how to uh, convert and function into canonical form is uh, sum of product and product of sum form is uh, again using the truth table. So, suppose you have x, y, z the variables and that is the 8 possible values 0 to 7 and as I mentioned either a mean term will occur in the function or not right. So, let us say in this scenarios this this cases these are the mean terms are there in the function. So, this f can be represented as a using this mean terms where the value is 1, right. So, this is this, it is x bar y bar z bar is this, then this is x bar y z. So, this is uh, x bar y z bar, this is x bar y z and so on. So, this 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so these 5 product terms or mean terms are there. So, this is the unique representation of this function, okay. So, this is the uh, sum of product term. Now, how I will get this uh, product of sum term for this function? It is uh, quite uh, simple. So, suppose you have this function f, if you complement 2 times, this will remain f, right. And then what is f bar? As I mentioned in the previous class, f bar is basically the value where uh, the value of uh, f is 0. In those cases, this value will be 1, f bar and wherever the value is 1 for f, f bar will be 0. So, f bar is nothing but the product term where these values are 0. So, I can take this product term corresponding to the zeros, right, which is this one, this is basically x bar y bar z, this one is x y bar z bar and this is and the third one is x y bar z its complement right. So, now I can apply de Morgan's law and then this will become a product term 
and everything will be complemented. This is x plus y plus z bar dot x bar plus y plus z dot x bar plus y plus z bar. So, this is basically this. So, this is how I can represent a function in product of some term. Right. So, this is basically one product term, one max term and one max three max term. Right. So, 1, 4, 5, 1, 4 and 5. Okay. So, I, this is how I can represent uh, a function in sum of product or product of some function. Now, I will talk about uh, given some arbitrary expression how I can convert into sum of product form. Suppose I have given this expression, okay. although this is sum of product form, but this is not the mean term. right? So, the deficiency here is like I have to convert this into mean term. This is a mean term x, y, z because this function has three variables x, y and z. Uh, this product term does not have all uh, here z is missing, here x, y is missing. Okay. So, how can I convert uh, here? I can uh, I know that x plus x bar is 1. Right. So, in this case I identify z is missing. So, with this product term I will multiply z into z bar because if you do x dot 1 is x. Right. So, you have this x bar y dot y is x bar y. So, and now uh, in, in place of y I will write z into z bar because in I have seen that in, in this case z is missing. In this product term x and y both are missing. So, I will write x into x bar, z into z bar into z bar because I am just multiplying with 1 and it does not matter. right? Now, I will distribute. So, I now distribute this over this. So, I will get this and this product term. I will distribute this and over this and I will end up getting this four terms. You can do that easily and this is this. right? And now, I can see there are some uh, repetition. For example, you can just identify what are the terms are repeating here. I think this and this is same. So, this way you can just uh, because x plus x is x. So, I can just uh, remove all the repeated terms and I will end up getting this. right? So, this is how I can convert any formula into sum of product form. Similarly, uh, given any formula how I can convert into product of some form here uh, the similar stuff. So, uh, you see here, so it is basically suppose you are given this formula and you see this, this is one product term, this is another product term, but in this product term your x is missing, right? in this product term y and z is missing. Okay? So, what I am going to do? Uh, I know that if I, I have a product term x and if I add y into y bar, it is this is always 0. Right. So, x plus 0 is x. Right. So, I can always add any y into y bar kind of form to any of them. Right. So, what I am doing here for x I am just adding y y bar and z z bar because in this product term uh, y and z is missing. So, just to do add that I just add y y bar z z bar. In this product term x is missing. So, I am just adding x x bar. Okay. And then I will just apply the distributed property here. So, I can just uh, apply this. So, finally, I end up having this formula, okay, which is uh, it is like this, right. So, you just do the distribution here, then with this you can distribute over here and you end up having this formula. Okay. So, this way I will just can convert any uh, switching of expression into product of some form expression. Now, uh, converting a sum of product to product of sum, uh, which is also uh, simple and I have already explained that. Suppose, I have already given a product term this, this is my T or F and I will just apply double complement, right, which is involution theorem. So, if you take T bar bar, which is basically T. So, now this T bar is the product term that is missing here, right. So, and then uh, I can identify the, how many product terms are there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, uh, I can just there are 2 missing and the missing product terms are this 2. So, T bar is basically x bar y z bar plus x y z bar 
right it's a complement of t and it is basically these are the cases this formula will be one so only the other two scenario where uh, this product term is missing here the formula will be zero so i'm going to uh, take those two product term okay this is similar to the my discussion here right uh, in this particular table so i'll take this uh, other t bar the other two product term and then I'll complement this using D Morgan. So, this will be my product of sum. So, just to summarize how can I convert a sum of product to product of sum? I will just pick up the mean term that is missing in my particular formula and I'll just apply a complement on the top of that then I'll get the formula in POS format. Okay. So, this is important uh, how I'll say two switching functions are equivalent if they are canonical sum of product form are identical. So, I have explained this earlier also that you take two arbitrary formula, you convert them into sum of product form and if they are equivalent they will always have the same sum of product form. Okay? So, this is very important in context of a circuit minimizations and other simplifications. Okay? Now, this I have discussed in the last class also that if there are n variables how many possible functions are there? It is 2 to the power 2 to the power n. Why? Because with n variables, there are 2 to the power n mean terms and then this mean term either present in a function or not present. Right? So, because if, if the if particular for this particular uh, combination of variable, if function output is 1, then this mean term is present and it, in that combination of variable, if the uh, function output is 0, that is not present. Okay? So, there are two possibilities of this, right? So, that is why it is 2 to the power 2 to the power n. This poly uh, possible functions are there, right? Which is kind of can be shown like this. If there is a function, there are 2 to the power n possible mean term like this x1 dash y2 dash to xn, then this is x1 dash y2 dash, and then finally xn, it is xn bar to xn, and there are associated constant a, ai, right? and this a i can be 0 and 1. If this mean term occurs here, it is 0, other it is not 1. That is why this is 2 to the power 2 to the power n. Okay? So, uh, now for uh, if you have two variables, the, there are four product terms, right? it is x bar y bar, x bar y, x y bar and x y. So, there are four product terms and in a function, they may occur and may not occur. right? So, that is why I just put a0, a1, a2 and a3 and this if this occurs here a0 will be 1, if x bar y bar does not occur in this function then it will be 0. So, for two variables there are 2 to the power 2 which is 4, this many possible mean terms 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 possible mean terms and in a function either they occur or not occur right. So, that is a 2 possibility 2 to the power 4, so that means 16. So, with two Boolean variables or switching variables will have basically 16 possible functions and for two input things these are all represent one of the gate and which is uh, the building block of any combinational circuit. Okay? So, I will just explain that particular uh, combinations and what that particular gate means. Okay? So, as I mentioned for uh, x y there are four mean terms and they may or may not occur. So, the value of a0, a1, a2 and a3 can have uh, 0 or 1. So, there are 4 variables. So, 2 to the power 4 possible values right? and these 4 possible values are written here 16 possible values. right? So, this is means a0, a1, a2, a3 none of them is 1. right? So, that means this is uh, the function is always 0 which is basically some inconsistent function. Okay? Now, you think about that a3 a2, a1 and a0, a3, a2 and a1 is 0 and a1 is, a0 is 1. Okay? That means your function is this, that means your function is x bar, y bar okay? and this is what is nothing but nor, okay? that is in uh, digital design we uh, term the particular gate as nor gate and it is symbol is like this. Okay? So, this is x bar, y bar. And functionality is that if both of them are 0, then only it will be 1, right? because it is x bar y bar. So, if it is 0, then it will be 1. If y equal to 0, then it will be 1, right? Uh, then the overall function will be 1. 
So, this is what is NOR gate uh, for us okay? and it is represented by this. It is not of OR, exactly the opposite behavior of OR. Right? In OR what happens? Uh, in OR basically if one of the value is 1, then it is 1 and it is 0 whenever both are 0. It is exactly the opposite of OR, so that is why it is a NOT OR, NOR. So, the representation is also like this, you have a OR gate, you put a bubble which is basically NOT, this is my NOR gate. Okay. So, uh, whenever you have uh, A0 equal to 1, this function, uh, the Boolean function that we will get is nothing but a NOR gate. Okay. Similarly, if you uh, take uh, the variable, this A1 is 1, that means in this case you have this one, right? x bar y, x bar y, which is uh, this one, x bar y, and this is one one possible function. You can actually represent this x bar y, and you can understand that in this case, whenever you have uh, x equal to zero and y equal to one, the value will be one. Rest of the cases, the function for zero zero one zero and one one output will be zero. Okay, and only for this it will be one. Okay. This is one possible gate, but this is not so well known gate, so that is why it, it has no name. Okay. The important gates, uh, gates that we usually conventionally use is NOR gate, NAND gate, OR gate, AND gate, XOR gate and XNOR gate. Okay. So, these are the very common gates that we use and this can be defined from this value of A0, A1, A2 and A3. So, that is something I am going to explain here. Okay. Similarly, whenever you have this both a1 and a0 is 1, so that means you have x bar y bar plus x bar y. So, if you take x bar common, then this is y plus y bar, it is basically x bar. So, that means it is a not get effectively, right. So, uh, it is basically you are giving its output is x bar. And so, this way you can actually uh, represent other combinations. And the important combination is that whenever you have A0 and A2 is A1 and A2 is 1, which is means in this uh, cases A1 and A2 means this one. So, it is basically x bar y plus x y bar. This is important functionality, it is called XOR, okay? exclusive OR or XOR. So, in this case, it is basically if it is 0, 1 or 1, 0, right? then only it value will be 1. Right? So, if it is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, this is output will be 0, in this case output will be 1, output will be 1, here it will be 0. Right? So, if one of the value is 1, then the output is 1, but if both 0 and both 1, the output will be 0. So, this is given by this truth table and it is represented by this, okay? this is very important get XOR. Okay? Uh, similarly, you have NAND gate which is another important one. So, where you are saying that, uh, that A0 a, A1 and A2 all are there and only for the case of uh, A3 is not there. right? So, that means you have in these three cases it will be 1. right? So, it is effectively uh, this three cases A0, A1 and A2 is 1. So, it is basically x bar y bar plus x bar y plus x y bar. If you simplify this expression, you will end up getting x bar plus y bar. You can try that. So, this is the case. Okay. So, in this case, whenever any of the value is 0, it will be 1. Right? It is basically not of AND gate. Right? So, in AND what happen if it is 1, if both of them is 1 and if any of them is 0, it is 0. In NAND, if one of the input is 0, it is a 1. It is just a not of AND gate. Okay? So, this is what is NAND gate and it is again draw like this. So, you have a AND gate, you give a dot and this is NAND gate. Okay. And if one of the value is 0, output is 1 and if both of them is 1, output is 0. Okay. So, this way uh, other functions are defined AND gate, equivalence, implication. Implication is another important uh, function which is represented by x implies y which is where you have A3 1, A1 1 and A0 1 and if you simplify this expression corresponding it will come x bar y. Okay. And you can actually construct the truth table for this x bar y. So, if it is 0, right? so if you try to construct this 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 
So, when a bar is your x bar is 0 output will be 1 right. So, it will be output will be 1 when a bar uh, uh, or y equal to 1 right. So, if y equal to 1 output will be 1. So, in this case it will be 0 right this is very uh, important one a this is x implies y. So, when a bar x is 0 output is 1 whenever uh, y is 1 output is 1, but whenever the other one x is 1 and y is 0 output is 0 ok. This is implication. So, there are 16 possible such combinations and uh, these are the important one that uh, is widely used in digital design ok. The gates are like AND gate OR gate, NAND gate NOR gate XOR, XNOR and implications ok. So, XOR as I mentioned it is basically given by this symbol is A X or B representation of the gate is like this. It also satisfy the commutativity property, associativity property and distributive property. I will suggest you to check you can always using the truth table you can prove them, but uh, it is actually satisfy all of them right. So, A B X or A C it is A and B X or C ok. So, this is very important. And there is also satisfy another interesting thing if your output is C equal to so if this is C this is A and B uh, this also satisfy this. So, if you do a, a X or C you will get B if you do B X or C you will get A and if you do the X or of A B and C you will get 0 again you can prove this with truth table which I am not doing now. Uh, but this is the important property that XOR satisfies ok. Uh, the final part of this uh, topic is the functionally complete operation. Uh, it basically the set of operation with which you can represent any Boolean circuit ok or digital circuit. Those are called uh, a combination. It is not a single uh, gate, but it can be a set of gates ok. Usually obviously that uh, because switching algebra is developed for uh, digital designs or computational circuit this is obviously complete because uh, we can represent anything uh, any circuit with AND OR this is AND this is OR and NOT right that is a part of switching one. But we can also show that uh, this only OR AND negation and complement OR you have only AND AND negation they are also complete we can prove that. Similarly, this NAND gate and NOR gate is also functionally complete. What does this mean? So, the circuit may have XOR gate, NAND gate, NOR gate, XOR gate any any gates are there, but I can always convert them into a circuit with only NAND gate ok or I can convert them into a circuit with only NOR gate ok. Similarly, I can only convert them into a circuit with AND gate OR gate and complement or AND gate or complement. So, these are the functionally complete set. To prove uh, a particular uh, set is functionally complete for example, NOR you just show that NOR is functionally complete. So, that I will take already some known uh, functionally complete set which is say may be the OR set uh, OR and complement or AND and complement. Uh, and then I try to show that I can represent these two using NOR gate. Now, see this is since this is already a known uh, functionally complete set. Uh, so, that means, I can take any circuit and I can convert into this and then I from this I can convert into NOR because this gate can be represented in terms of NOR ok. So, then I can prove that I can represent any circuit with NOR gate and just to uh, uh, intuitively say why this is also uh, functionally complete because this is basically uh, you can uh, represent this uh, your circuit in sum of product or product of sum right. So, this uh, probably will uh, cover this. So, let us now just show that you can actually uh, represent the NOT AND OR using NOR gate ok. So, what I am doing here x NOR x right. So, that means you are doing x NOR y means x bar dot x bar because NOR is this and this is basically x bar. So, now complement can be represented by NOR gate right. Similarly, uh, I can take a OR gate and I can show that it this can be represented by NOR gate like this how I will do x NOR y NOR x NOR y ok. From this I can know that this is basically x NOR y 
x nor y complement right by this rule and then nor is basically x bar y bar. So, if I just apply here it will come up to this and then I apply d morgan I will get this. So, that means I can represent a or gate using nor gate and since I already know that a or gate and a complement that is a complete set I can represent uh, so that means my nor is also complement because I can take a circuit I can convert into a circuit with or and uh, complement and then I will convert this or with equivalent nor and complement with equivalent nor right. So, this way I can uh, represent any design with only nor gate. So, similarly you can show that NAND is also a complete set ok. So, with this I conclude today's discussion thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.